Hey, how y'all doing? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's just shining his shoes. <laughs> no, and, and they go with my jersey because that's the best team out there. Wait, wait. <laughs> um, okay, today we we're talking about 1.6, and 1.6 is, is describing the distribution of quantitative variables. So, um, so how does the data fall? What's important? What do we need to know? So a little bit of uh, straight up learning here from us. Uh, when you are using descriptions of distributions of quantitative data, you want to include key pieces. And so key pieces include things like what's the shape of the graph? Where does the center of the graph fall? What does a typical data point look like? What does the variability look like? Um, and we're gonna look at things that maybe you've heard before, maybe you uh, haven't heard before, like outliers and gaps and clusters and peaks. Um, and so we're just gonna dive right in with some of these like key features and we're gonna start with one that I hope you've heard before, which is an outlier. So an outlier is one, think about the word outlier. It lies outside of the typical data set. So it's either a lot bigger or a lot smaller than what you would expect to see um, with the rest of the data. You wanna to add to that, Mr. Bobby? I think that's pretty good. Just somebody who's on the outs a little bit, maybe. Yep. And then we talk about sort of three different types of shape. Um, now there's more than these three, but these are the typical three. You might see that the data is skewed right, which means that your right tail is longer than your left tail, which is weird if you've never thought about data having a tail before. That's not what I want. I want it to be like a bump and sticking out more to that way. This is to the right. And then if you are skewed left, that means your left tail is longer than your right tail. So the skewness is gonna follow the tail. And then if there's no skew, right? If that tails look about the same, then we would call that symmetric. Okay. Can't get my C in there. There we go. Yay. <laughs> All right, maybe not. Okay. All right. You're an artist. I'm not an artist. <laughs> I'm a mathematician slash statistician. Yeah. Okay. So a little more about shape. Most graphs are unimodal. So every one of the three that you just saw are unimodal because they have one peak or one hump. Right? That would be unimodal. Uni meaning one. There are graphs with, that are multimodal. You could have like a bimodal, meaning it's like, uh, Mr. Bobby says, it's like a camel, because it's got two humps. Um, he's writing camel. He should be writing bimodal, bi meaning two. And then if the, <laughs> if the graph doesn't have any peaks and everything's kind of the same height, we would call that about uniform, approximately uniform. Um, and that might be like if something, if the price is something is unchanging over a certain period of time. Um, okay, so now let's look at, so that, those are basic shapes. So now let's look at if we're, uh, if we've determined a basic shape, is there a place in the graph where it seems like there's data missing? That place where there's data missing, we call that a gap. So you've got one data, there. and you've got this one or two or three other points over here, that region of no data, that's called a gap. I thought that's where we used to go buy jeans. Uh, I don't even know if that store is still open. I think they closed. They might have. Yeah. I never could wear gap jeans. They didn't fit me right. Uh, okay. So also we have what are called clusters. So you can see what happened here. He just changed that one dot to three. That becomes a cluster now. Um, and when it was just one dot, we think it's potentially an outlier. Uh, but if you've got all these data points together over here. If you can kind of lump a group together separate from a different group, that's kind of a cluster. Yep. Now, 
the last sentence here is really important. It says descriptive statistics does not uh, attribute properties of a data set to a larger population, but may provide the basis for conjectures for subsequent testing. So later on in these videos, we might draw some conjectures about some information. And that those conjectures might lead us to thinking, I need to do more testing because uh, I, I feel a certain way. Or I believe something is happening, but I don't have statistical evidence. It's one thing to think something's gonna happen or have a gut feeling or have a, an opinion. Um, it's another thing to prove it or to verify it statistically. We never prove anything statistically. Right, right. We always want to talk about convincing evidence. Do we have enough evidence that we've convinced you? Okay, so in the last video, you watched or you saw us discuss a, um, a picture that had uh, two men and their very, very young wives. Uh, which led us to looking at some global data on the median age of marriage. So this is a histogram that represents the median age of women at marriage. And we might want to describe this distribution. Now we just talked about some of the key elements that we might want to use to describe it. What are you about to show us? Oh, I was going to have a snack. I... Oh, you have a whole Hershey's bar. I have three of them. Why? Why? Because I'm, you know, well, I'll tell you why later. Just because I like Hershey bars. I have grapes and they're little ones. Enjoy your grape. I'm not going to eat the, I won't eat it in front of you, but I did, I was, <laughs> I'm going to eat, uh, I'm going to eat part of this candy bar after this video. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So here are the things that we want to look at. And we're going to use the acronym CUSMBS. And I don't care if it's offensive. Huh? Um, <laughs> so custom BS is going to help us remember the, how to uh, remember the key features of describing a distribution. These are the four things you must discuss when describing a distribution of data. You must talk about the center. Mr. Bobby, center, what does that mean? We talk about mean, median, and mode collectively in statistics as what we what we call measures of central tendency. What's going on for the average? We don't really have an average in statistics. We have measures of center. And so we talk about the mean and the median most often. Mode is sometimes thrown out, but not always. Yeah. And there, there will be times when it's appropriate to use the mean and times when it's appropriate to use the median. And we'll discuss that later. After you've determined a center, then you want to tell the reader about anything unusual you find about the graph. This is so, where you might discuss outliers, gaps, or uh, just un, you know unusual things. Right. And we already talked about what that might look like. So those are kind of the things that you're looking at that the reader might be interested in. And but, it's okay to say there's nothing unusual about the data. Set, right? yeah. But you've got to. It better to say that. You need to say that. You right. just. That's also important. It's important for us as the readers to know, like there's nothing, there's, there's nothing strange here. There's no outliers. There's, you know, kind of what we expected. Yep. Then you need to talk about shape. And I kind of give you skewed right, symmetric and skewed left again. But remember that it could also be bimodal, which is not one of these three, or it could be that one that's, unchanging that uniform okay so you've got those options as well this is, that's just less common um, and then you're going to want to talk about the spread of the data so the spread of the data which is also known as variability is super important to us and we're going to talk about that in great detail for now the only type of spread that you know about is the range okay and we've talked a little bit about range already uh, but there are another couple that we're going to talk about. One is called standard deviation. One is called interquartile range. Those are really important measures of variability as well. And potentially the most important part of all of this, because statistics is all well and good, but if nobody understands what you're talking about, then you have wasted your breath. We don't want, we can look up definitions in the book. 
we want you to tell us what it means for the context of the problem. So if we're talking, of, when we're talking about marriages, we want to talk about you to tell us that this graph tells me something of what, tell me what this graph tells me about marriages. Right. I said that right. So I think you did. I think you did. Eventually we did. <laughs> okay. So take a minute and pause the video and try to cuss and BS this distribution of the median age of women at marriages. And uh, once you finish, restart the video and let's see how you did. Go. Okay. So I hope the first thing that you discussed was the average age of a woman at marriage. Uh, so we can do this a couple of different ways. Right now we can just kind of eyeball it um, probably the easiest way when you have a histogram that's got fairly small counts is actually just to find the median. So what I would do here is there's 25 data points from... If I remember that from before. Right. Um, so what's halfway to in between 25, Mr. Robbie? That would be 12 and a half. So right. I, want, I want to find... Now because we have an odd number, I want to find the number in the middle of singleton. So that would be the 13th number, 12, okay. below, 12 below that. Right, so this would be one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, 13. She's adding up the frequencies in each column to get the amount that is in that column and all below it. So we now know that the 13th data point is in that bar. In so that 24 to 26 24, bar. Yes. Right. And so I said uh, approximately 25 years old. You, it is so important for you to use approximately about these, I call them wishy-washy words. The wishy-washy words help you argue later. Well, it wasn't 25, it was 26. Well, I said about, so it's fine. Um, so and she mentioned the context, the situation. That covers, actually covers three of our letters of the whole acronym. Right. And at this point, because I've talked about, I've already referenced the prompt or I've, you know, I've, I've been specific to the problem. If I don't do that again, it's fine. You just have to do it once. Okay. Now, if you do it over and over again, that's all right. It just might be a lot of words. And this all is right. the, that's the C. So we got the C and the BS in the first bullet. Now, if we're cussing, the next thing we're doing is the U part, which is looking for anything unusual. I don't see any gaps, I don't see any clusters, and I don't see any outliers. So I'm gonna say there's nothing unusual about this graph. If I don't say there's nothing unusual about this graph, then you're gonna get points deducted because that's part of describing the graph is saying, yes, there is, or no, there's not. The graph appears to be roughly symmetric. So is it perfectly symmetric? If I were to fold it along 25, would the, it look exactly the same? Nope. What wishy-washy word allows me to say symmetric? Roughly. And I could it have appears. Said, and appears. I could have said approximately. I could have said about. Using these words the, that keep you from being too direct about your information is paramount in this course. And the last, wait, my, yeah. So I just did C, U, S, and I have one more S, and it is spread. So the spread that we know is the range. And so I would say the range of women's ages at marriage is 32.7 minus 16, which is 16.7 years of age. If I just used my graph, I would have said 34 minus 16. And I would have said is about, I would have put about. Now I used the actual data points when I did this. So I didn't need to use a, about or approximately, okay? Um, but if you use the minimum and maximum from the, what you see in the intervals, that's, that's what fine. You, you would just say about 18 years of age. And is it okay that 18 is not 16.7? Yep, it's fine. That's why we use wishy-washy words. All right. Let's move on. So we also want to be able to compare two data sets. A word of caution. Compare does not mean 
just state. It doesn't mean cuss and BS the first graph, cuss and BS the second graph, and you're done. It means you need to use comparative words like less than, greater than, similar to. So just I do the median of the men is appears to be greater than the median of the women. That's the comparison we're looking for. Right. Okay. So pause your video and go ahead and try to compare cuss and BS using comparative words. And then we will come back together and see how you did. Maybe you could listen to me. All right, we're back. We're back. Okay. So I keep moving as to where we are right on the words. There we go, over there. So the average age of women at marriage appears to be approximately 28 years old, which appears to be younger than the men at what appears to be 31 years old. And I didn't even say this, and I definitely should have. So I like suck this back and re go here. So what I did next is I took data from the countries in the Americas. So just the Americas, and I'm comparing here the average age of men to the average age of women. So I'm sorry, I should have said that before you attempted to answer this question. This is a different, yeah, this is different than the, right. <laughs> that would help. Yeah, that was in the title. We could have a highlighted title. <laughs> um, so what word, what comparative word, Mr. Bobby, um, got me my credit for comparison? Uh, let's see. Uh, appears to be brought. You just list the two there. You didn't really compare them, did you? There's one word that will get you the comparative point, and it is younger. Oh, I'm young, younger. No. Could I have said less than or greater than? Yes. And I actually had that typed and then changed the word because I don't want to, like, I don't want you to feel like you have to use less than or greater than. There are other comparative words out there. I just want you to relate them in some way. Okay. All right, next we're looking for anything unusual. Uh, there appears to be a gap in the women's data between 24 and 26 years old, but there's nothing unusual about the men's graph. So you've got this like country where the average is much lower than the rest. Okay, then we're gonna do the shape. They are both a approximately rough, roughly symmetric. Um, you might argue that the men's is maybe slightly skewed right, but I would call them approximately so roughly symmetric. And you're not gonna really, as long as you address it and address it well, like address it, you can have a little bit of wiggle room there. Right, right. You're not gonna have to, we're not all gonna use the same words there. Right. And then, um, uh, the last thing is spread. So if we talk about range, we would say something along the lines of the range of the women's ages at marriage is about 12 years old. Men is about 10 years old. Um, this makes the range of the women's ages larger than the men's ages. So there's your comparative word, the larger than. Okay, I hope you did well. So we can um, look at a dot plot as well, not just a histogram. So it says the dot plot displays the scores of 21 statistics students on a 20 point quiz. And it wants to know what percent of students scored higher than 16 points. What do you think, Mr. Bobby? Well, I would look there and I have two options. I can count all those dots and do what it says, or I can be smart and realize how many dots there are total and test take four away from that. So how many dots are there total? There are only two numbers in the stem of the problem. I just gotta be really careful there are 21 students in this hypothetical class, so I would tell me that there are 17 students in that group above because there's only four down here. Now, if you want to count 17, you go on with your bad self, okay? So I would do 17 divided by 21, and then I would need to convert that to a percentage. I think and it was 81%. So if I were to put this in my calculator, I would get 0.81 or approximately, and I could round it, but you were assuming or smart enough to do this and make that 81%. Yeah, I, I was. <laughs> I would hope so, by the time you're in AP Statistics. <laughs> okay, so next question says, describe the shape of the distribution. It might help you to draw along the points. Yeah, just like that. And then look at, does it have a tail? Yes. 
What direction does the tail go? And again, I think I may have said this before, when you're talking about the shape, shape you want to imagine it like a, const a constellation. It's not perfect, but I just kind of drew what I felt like it looked like. So I would say this is skewed left. Yeah. And then the last question here says, are there any potential outliers and what makes you think that? Well, the only one that I think is a possibility is this guy down here. And I'm sorry, my graph's not getting a little muddy, but I have a bunch of them. We already established there's a bunch of them above 16. And there's a couple of them. There's like a little cluster around 14. But then there's this pitiful little score down here at 11. And I'm sorry if you, you know, I've been there. I haven't done well on a quiz. So my potential outlier is, I would say, 11. Now, I'm not, you know, it's, it's, far to the left, okay? Um, or it's on its own. Yeah. Okay? On. And we are gonna talk uh, about how do we say for sure something is an outlier. So don't feel concerned if you're like, I don't know how to answer that question because after this video, you will have the, the why part will become really easy for you. Yeah, we, the question would never be asked this way in the actual exam, we're just kind of setting you up, but it's, just the one I am a little suspicious about that 11. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, what's called a back-to-back -back stem and leaf plot. And so what we're seeing here is we're comparing our resting, or this is middle school kids, resting heart rate before they started exercising and then they ran for five minutes and their heart rate after their five minute run, okay? Notice the key tells you how to read it. So he just circled in pink, that would be 82 beats per minute to the left before resting heart rate, 86 after. Now that's not the same person, I'm not saying that. No, just they're not, they're just, but that's how you read it. And right. when they're back to back, you may have seen this, seen a stem and leaf plot. I think we, I know you may have seen another, maybe seen another class. We talked about it before, but we didn't have it going on both sides. So the numbers in the middle are the first characters of the number. And the numbers at the end are the last digits. Right. So we're gonna write a few, um, Comparison sentences, and we're gonna cuss and BS, so we'll start with center. What do you think the easiest center to grab here is, Mr. Bobby? I would go for the median because I have a small number of people and I could count it. So I have um, 19 middle school students, so I would want the 10th number. So I would, they're already in order. That's the beauty of a stem and leaf plot, is they're already in order, so I'm gonna start counting with the smallest number and work my way up, and they're in order. So if I go here, that's 68 is the smallest number. That's one, two, three, four. Now be careful. The next number is 70. Seven, zero, that's the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and right here, this guy would be the one I want. What is that median? 76, okay? So the median, uh, heart rate or resting rate is 86. Okay, and likewise, I could do the same on the other side. Miss Young's already done the counting and it's 98. Yeah. The median exercise. Now, remember, you're comparing. So the first thing I need to do is, it was 98, sorry. I first got to find them and then I could say the median exercise rate is greater than or is, um, I could even give the number is 12 greater than the resting heart rate. Yeah, okay. beats per minute, zero beats per minute. Beats per minute, minute. yes. <laughs> um, after we discuss the center, and we're not writing this for you, take notes, um, then we would talk about anything unusual so I'm, I, seeing, I'm seeing some gaps. Some gaps. And I, so I would just say like both resting and after uh, exercise heart rates appear to have a gap in the data. 
And when I, if I want to talk about the tail, I kind of got to look at it sideways and I can see that there's n numbers on the high side that are pulling it to be bigger. Well, the bigger, I have to kind of I look at it this way. Now it's on the right. Okay. Don't look at this because it's backwards. But um, it's going, it's got a skew to the right. Both yeah. resting and exercise have skew to the right would be our shape. Right. So again, you're following that tail. Um, but it's confusing because this is, you need to treat this like a number line. You almost want to just want to like turn your laptop so you can see those tails going off to the right. Oh, no, 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 that was awkward. <laughs> After that. you do shape, then you're going to go to spread. Spread is your range. So we're not going to do this for you because we think you can subtract at this point, but you might want to say like 146 minus 86. So whatever that number is. 60. 60. Um, and then you would do 120 minus 68. Uh, what is that? That's 52? Yeah, 52. So you would say like the after exercise range is larger than the before, before exercise. The rest of the range. You could say by how much. Do mention the actual values though, okay? I'm going to say one last thing about this. This dude needs to go see a doctor. The, the 146 guy? Well, the guy has a resting heart rate of 120. Oh, I mean, the 120 guy. Yeah, he's like a bird. <laughs> I mean, like, dude, I mean, like, I'm in the 60s, low 60s sitting here. I know you're in, like, the 30s or something. Cause you're I'm right. in the 30s. I think my resting heart rate is, like, usually between 56 and 58. Yeah, but, you know, that's, that's like, pretty hot. He probably needs to get some medical attention. That's a little different. It's a little different. Yeah, a little bit different. But then again, I'm making conclusions based on the graph yeah. that I shouldn't. Yeah. All right. So some students purchased a pumpkin for a carving contest. Before the contest began, they weighed the pumpkins. Weights are in pounds. Here's the distribution. Let's quickly talk through a custom BS for this guy. Um, I think you guys are getting the, the idea of this now. Um, if I wanted to talk about center, I would have to, I would go with uh, frequency again, maybe, or median. One, 22, 20, 23 data points. So we would take 23 divided by two would be 11 and a half. So I, I need 11 below and 11, so I want the 12th data. Okay, so and six, and then to the next one is eight, six and 18 is 14, so. Somewhere in there. The, so the so median is, what do you want to say about seven and a half? You can say seven and a half. You can even say between five and ten if you would like, my peoples. Yep. Once you find the center, then you're going to go to anything unusual. Ah, okay. ah. Oh, go back. Okay. About, and I put in the pound pumpkin. Pow, I got my BS. I got my center and my BS. I usually try to knock those puppies out right away. Oh, I shouldn't be knocking out puppies. That would be mean. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then we go to anything unusual and we see we've got this gap. We've got this gap in the graph. And so we're going to want to say something about the gap in the graph. Then we go to shape. We've got this, um, what do you think? I'm saying that's skewed, right? Right. Then we need to talk about the spread. So we can go up here to the actual data itself, or we can just use the graph and use a wishy-washy word. So it looks like 35 minus zero would be a spread of approximately 35. And how about this? Are you okay with the squiggly equals? You know, it's funny. I don't know if the AP allows for that symbol. I don't know. You have to look it up. As a math, I would say, and as a mathematician, I'd say that. But you know what? I can write the word about. <laughs> I just ate my grape because it's been staring at me. I still got mine. <laughs> okay. You judge me because it's white chocolate. There's like white chocolate, you know. <laughs> isn't actually chocolate. White chocolate is um, just like sugar. Maybe that's why. Not that there's anything wrong with sugar. <laughs> yeah, okay, well. okay, really quick. Uh, the, the most important thing that we talked about today is cussing and BSing. 
uh, making sure that you're addressing all four of those pieces and you're referencing the prompt in your response and if you're comparing that you're using comparative words. I can't circle this one enough. Yep, be specific, be specific. I don't even know if I'll grade it if you don't reference the prompt. Yeah, if you don't like talk about the problem, what it's about, whether it's about pumpkins or marriages or Hershey bars, if it ain't talking about that, you're, you're pretty much done. Yeah. Okay, here's your four uh, Khan Academies for the night. We hope this video was helpful and interesting, and we will see you on the next one. Bye, guys. Yeah,